What's going on guys, as a tradition, today I'll be putting my NHL fantasy teams in an NHL 21 simulation to see how good they do. Uh, first things first, I actually want to show you guys the fantasy teams I drafted. So I have one ESPN league where it was a snake draft, and then a Yahoo league which was actually an auction draft. So uh, the ESPN league here, you'll see the first thing you'll probably notice is the Jad, 6th overall. Uh, that draft was at 3 in the afternoon, I kind of slept in, I was like seconds late to my pick. I would have taken Panarin who was still available, but at least I got on, it was like 3, 2, 1. And I uh, didn't have time to switch it. Hopefully Zabana Jet does about as good as Panarin, but uh, what are you going to do? Then we got Stam around two, Ranton around three, I think it's really nice. Anderson's my starting goalie. Uh, Hughes and Barry lead in the defense. We got Larkin. Uh, Landis Cog, I think he's going to have a big year. Marcheseau, um, Ehlers, Forsberg, even guys like, you know, Tarasenko. Hopefully he can come back in a month or so. That uh, was my third last pick. Palat in the last pick. Playing the line of Stammer and Brain Point, I think he'd be really good this year. So, I right, there's a look at the ESPN draft. Uh, next year I'll show you guys the Yahoo draft. So uh, the ESPN one, like I said, was a snake. Yahoo was auction. So uh, my auction draft strategy is kind of go for a more balanced team opposed to like top heavy with a few superstars and then just filling it out with like a bunch of $1 players. Uh, so Taylor Hall was actually the first person I took. 25 bucks. Vashlevsky. So I did get the best goalie. You know, I'll see if that was worth it or not. Uh, Bennington, some good D. Rensky, Krug, Barry, Patrick, Kuznetsov, Larkin again. Carlson as well on D. Um, I think there's actually eight players. Um, that are the same on both these teams. So hopefully those eight players um, can do good for me here. But I think last year, guys, I actually did a franchise mode for each team. This time I want to switch things up. I think this could actually be a bit cooler. We're going to put both teams into the same season mode. That way they could actually potentially play each other in the Stanley Cup final and actually get an idea of which of my fantasy teams is better. Um, also, too, of course, we'll always, you know, uh, take a look when they play each other the regular season, uh, see who wins those games. So uh, I'll try season mode here. And as always, guys, I want to start with the two worst teams. I feel like that's the most fair. It actually works out really well, too, as the worst team in the NHL in terms of overall is LA Kings. They're 82 overall in the West. And then in the East, it's the Ottawa Senators, who are actually the second worst team in the NHL, 83 overall. So for the Ottawa Senators, I think we'll sub in the ESPN team as just E for ESPN. Makes sense to have them in the East. You can see their name is Espoo. I figured, you know, <laughs> it was one letter away from ESPN. Uh, it was the closest thing I could come up uh, for that ESPN city. And then for the West, we'll do the LA Kings. Uh, that'll be the Yahoo team. Uh, you might have noticed the Yahoo city is Yaroslavl. Really wasn't much close to Yahoo, but kind of a weird name, similar to Yahoo. Uh, so the Yaroslavl Yahoo fantasy team, 95 overall, and the Espoo ESPN fantasy team is 94 overall. Kind of interesting, actually, the auction draft uh, team is one overall higher. I should mention, too, um, the auction draft league is a 12-team league, where the ESPN league is a 10-team league. So according to that, I actually did a lot better than Yahoo, because, you know, there's two more teams, and yet uh, my team overall is higher, although... Fantasy output or whatever doesn't always equate to overall in NHL 21. And like I mentioned, guys, the reason we're doing a season mode is because I can actually take control of both of these teams uh, and make sure, you know, the lines are how I want them. There won't be any chemistry, but I still think it's the better way to go. So next year, guys, I'll show you the lines for both of these teams, starting off with the Yahoo fantasy team. we got Taylor Hall, Kuznetsov, and Tarasenko on the first line. Uh, March So Larkin, Patch Reddy on the second, Palat, Nugent Hopkins, Raquel on the third, and then we have Skinner, Deneau, and Duclair on the fourth. I uh, don't think I want to mention Skinner's actually not on my team. He was on my team for like a day, and then I dropped him for Deneau, but uh, the Yahoo League, there's just not enough spots to fill a 20 man roster, so I looked at the waiver wire, and Skinner and Shagkirk were like the two most owned um, players in waivers, so I figured those would be the two guys I put on my team. Uh, so speaking of that, you'll see on defense, Rensky Carlson is the top pair. We have Krug and Suter on the second pair, or Barry and Shankirk on the bottom pair. So again, uh, Shankirk's not actually on the team. Uh, goalies, best goalie in the game, Vasilevsky, Bainton backing him up. So really good backup. Uh, my little hot takes that went out uh, yesterday, I actually have him winning the Vesna this year. I feel like, you know, a bit of a redemption tour for him not having the best playoff. Uh, last year and, the, and before that, like, he was the best goalie in the world from January 2019 up until uh, St. Louis was lifting the Stanley Cup. So we'll see if we can kind of have a return to form here. Now, the only scratch player I have is actually Varlamov. He's the third goalie. Uh, quick look as well at special teams here. So the power play, I think the first one's pretty nasty. Uh, even the second one's not too bad. Unfortunately, one thing I noticed is Netsaw's face-offs are 67. So he's the first line center, but that's the only time he's playing center. Um, on all the special teams, I have him on the wing. You can see the four-man power play there. Basically, on special teams, Larkin becomes the 1C. I should call him Captain Larkin. Uh, he actually just got the C today. Um, you can see PK there, the three-man penalty kill. Overall, I think it's a really good team. We'll see whether or not they can come out of the West. And they're looking at the ESPN fantasy team here. You got Rantanen, Stammer, and Tarasenko on that first line. Uh, Zabana, Jad, Larkin, Landis Cog on the second. 
Marcelo Nuge, and Forsberg on the third with Ehlers, Raquel, and Palat on the fourth. Uh, defensively here, they got Hughes, Weber, Barry, Suter, Perron, and Heronic. So they actually have a forward on defense because this team actually I had an extra player. I think I have like 21 players on my fancy team. We're obviously we only need 20 here. So Perron's playing defense, but because of the season mode and there's no chemistry, hopefully, you know, it works out pretty good. He has a two-way forward, 88 defensive awareness, 89 shot block, 89 stick check. I think he'll be, you know, pretty good there as a defenseman. Goaltending wise, Anderson there isn't Vasilevsky. We still an elite goalie, I think. Uh, Kudobin backing him up is also a pretty solid backup. Now scratch players, uh, Duclair you can see is scratch on this team. Then we have Allmark there as a third goalie. I was actually about to drop Allmark for Darcy Kemper today. I'm not sure why Kemper was even in waivers. I wish I had noticed earlier, but uh, someone picked him up literally like five minutes before I did. Like I was literally looking at him. I was like, am I missing something here? Went to pick him up. He was gone. I might still actually drop Allmark for like Corby Salo I saw is available, but we'll see how good Buffalo does. Uh, special teams here, so Zibanejad, Stammer, Tarasenko, Ranch, and Hughes is a pretty nasty power play one. Uh, second unit there is also solid. Four-man power play, PK, uh, three-man penalty kill. You can see for both teams, Larkin and Eugene Hopkins are basically like the PK specialists. So as I was mentioning guys, both these teams have eight of the same players. Uh, those eight players are Dylan Larkin, Nugent Hopkins, uh, Tarasenko, as I was able to grab him really late in both leagues. I'm hoping he comes back, you know, by the end of February at the latest. Uh, March or so, who I just kind of happened to get. Uh, Palat, I got really late both times, playing first line of staring point. I'm hoping that's a good late pickup. Uh, Raquel, I actually got him in waivers one time and then drafted him the other. Same with Duclair. One time was a waiver pickup, the other time was a cheap draft. And then the eighth is actually Tyson Berry. Uh, both times, I was actually probably a little bit early on him, but I feel like contract year... You know, he wants to get paid after signing pretty cheap with Edmonton. This is going to be Feedy McDavid and Dreisel the puck in the power play. Didn't really do that great in the season opener tonight against the Canucks, but it's one game. Um, hopefully, you know, that's a good pick by me. As like I said, I got him on both teams. So those eight guys that really need to perform. Uh, so we'll sim here to the first game. I'll give you guys a look at offense, defense, goaltending uh, for each of these teams. Also, you guys can see their jerseys. You can already see the logos. You know, pretty self-explanatory. E for ESPN the Y for Yahoo. So ESPN team, you can see the home jersey there. It's actually ranting and rocking it. The away jersey, it's just red, white, and black colors. The alternate, I think we want the black. So uh, pretty sharp looking. They have 100 offense, nuts. 92 defense, 89 goaltending. So next year, we'll compare that to the Yahoo. So I got a member 100, 92, 89. Can't forget that. Obviously for this one, colors were like the purple, white, and black. Tarasenko is actually the highest rated player on this team. That's interesting. I'm surprised I guess he's probably tied with Hall, both 89, same with Carlson. So we're going to be able to look at the home, the away, and then the alternate. The alternate is also black on this one. And this is 100 offense, 93 defense, 93 goaltending. So one higher defense and then four higher goaltending, which I guess makes sense. I got Vasilevsky and Bainton on this one. Uh, both offenses are stacked. And probably the fact that they, I took Shankirk out of waivers uh, for the purposes of this video gives them six defensemen, which... Uh, probably a bit of a boost, but we'll start simming here guys see how both these teams do I really like them to both meet in the Stanley Cup final, but we'll see whether or not that happens and check this out guys In the fifth game of the year the two fancy teams are playing each other They're both two and two right now, which is kind of surprising I don't expect them to be three and one four and oh, but uh, it is early So uh, let's see what happens here first period and Larkin there scores for the Yahoo team second period uh, Ranging for the SPN team patch ready for the Yahoo team and in the third, Palat and Deneau. Palat actually gets an empty netter. There's a manager there for the ESPN team. So uh, Yahoo takes that first game 4-2. to two. I believe they'll play each other once, maybe twice more. Uh, curious to see kind of who wins the regular season series. So it's now the middle of January, guys. And we have the second matchup between these two fantasy teams. You can see the ESPN fantasy team is 29-14-1. Yahoo's 29-11-4. So very similar records. And this second matchup is their final one of the regular season. So I guess it'll be like an aggregate. Um, Yahoo won the first one, and that was away. So... Uh, ESPN's kind of in tough here. They gotta go against four away goals. If you guys don't know kind of how European soccer aggregate works. 2-2 after the first period. March so is advantage at ESPN. Patch ready Tarasenko for Yahoo. Nothing in the second. And 3-3. Landis Collard for ESPN. Crew for Yahoo going to OT. ESPN's actually outshooting Yahoo by quite a bit. Nothing in the first OT. And goes to a shootout where Yahoo does win it. So... Um, I guess Yahoo would win the series. It's like March so and Kuznetsov there got the two shootout goals. For a second, I was so confused. I'm like, how are there two goals in overtime? But I forgot. Uh, it's a regular season game. I'm used to uh, sitting playoff games. So 
I'll send another month or so to the deadline and uh, see where both these teams are at. So let's try the deadline here, guys. And I just remembered that apparently I've been saying Yahoo wrong this whole time. It's Yahoo, not Yahoo. I actually remember someone saying that to me last year. And I just remembered it like halfway through the video, so my bad. Uh, anyways, the Yahoo team. First in division, 85 points, 39, 15, and 7. Um, let's see, leading score. Tarasenko's tearing it up, 72 points in 61 games. I'm, you know, fingers crossed he comes back in as quick as he can. Because like I said, having him in both leagues, I got him late. He's on IR for both of them. ESPN team, Stammer's got 57 and 61, so not doing quite as good. But um, let's see, where are they in their division? They're also first in their division, 81 points there uh, with a record of 39, 19, and 3. So uh, right now, I would say both these teams still have, you know, that collision course uh, to meet in the Stanley Cup final. But Capitals also have 81 same with the Blues, uh, the Ducks have 80, so some other teams simming pretty well. Ducks is a bit of a surprise. Uh, I'll see where they end up at the end of the regular season here, and then get started with that playoff sim. So at the end of the regular season now, guys, as you can see, the ESPN team has a record of 49, 27, and 6. One shy of 50. Um, Yahoo, you can see, has got 114. And I think ESPN actually won Eastern Conference. Uh, they have 104 points, and I believe the Capitals are the next best team uh, with 103 points. So yeah, uh, ESPN there won the East. And Yahoo won the West. Yahoo, the 114 with a 52, 20, and 10 record. Uh, that's pretty ridiculous. And again, they're only one overall higher than ESPN, so that's kind of crazy. Uh, Tarasenko, 46 and 46 for 92 points. Um, just unreal. So the next best team in the West was the Blues there at 105. And the next best team in the East was the Capitals, 103. Uh, ESPN's leading score was Stammer, 80 points, 82 games. So a couple points shy there of a point per game. Uh, Tarasenko on the ESPN team only had 67. Very interesting. New 64. Ranton uh, 63. I'm kind of curious, especially to see like those eight guys do the same on each team. Um, how they performed on each one. I feel like the Yahoo teams probably gonna be doing a lot better uh, goaltending wise. Anderson's got pretty good. 0.919 and 2.3 is actually really good. Um, so now it's gonna be a question of if Yahoo's is better or not. So like I mentioned, Tarasenko there 92 points. Kuznetsov 87. Big year for him. Hall 68. Uh, Carlson 63, Larkin 59, March so 57, Patch Ready, Raquel 45, Raquel and Eugene Hopkins both finished with 45 points, Krug 33 there, so, um, you know, the guys you wouldn't expect to be putting up very many points didn't, although Renski 17, you expect probably a bit better from him, if he puts up that many points per game this season, it's gonna be a bad pick for me, although I didn't have him on the power play, um, on this team, Vasilevsky, wow, he played so many games, 74 games played, um, Bennington 10, 0.908 and a 2.57. 74 games played. How many games played um, did Anderson have? 65. So he also had quite a bit considering how good their backups were, but um, I think, you know, Bashelevsky's is pretty nuts. Also, too, Larkin 57, March so 42. Larkin had 59 on the Yahoo team, so he did slightly better. March so 57 is actually quite a bit better, 15 points better. So overall, the Yahoo team just performed better. I'm uh, gonna take a look at the entire standings here. 114 points, like that's pretty good. 69.5 win percentage. Uh, ESPN there, 104. St. Louis, breaking it up. Would have been sick if they went one and two. Eight teams there, 100 plus. Anaheim, super surprising. Nashville gets in at the 18 seed. And then the Devils get last. Now, they were actually my pick to finish last this year. I don't even think they're the worst team in the NHL. It's more so that they're the worst team in the East, which is the most competitive division. And since they're only playing teams in the East, I think they're being in a tough spot, but I'll uh, get started with the playoffs now. Hopefully, um, it works out with like they're playing on off day. Yahoo plays Nashville on the eighth, and ESPN plays the same day. So I'll probably sim like two games for the one, then two games for the other, uh, going back and forth. Probably the easiest way to do it. Um, so the first two games here for ESPN, they're one and one. Yahoo's also one and one. Okay, Nashville. I feel like Yahoo should be able to beat. Now they're three and one. And ESPN's 1-3 against the Sabres. They've only won so far in OT. Wow. 2-3. They have some life. 3-3. Three three. Uh, Yahoo's moving on. They're 4-2. They actually uh, lost that fifth game to the Predators, but then they won the sixth and the 6 nothing uh, shutout win. Come on, ESPN. The ESPN team is way too good to lose to the Sabres, but we'll see what happens here. They do pull it out. 4-3. Okay, so... Um, Buffalo pulled a bit of a Golden State there, up 3-1 to one and they choked. I mean, if ESPN went out in the first round, that'd been embarrassing. Uh, so ESPN has Toronto, Yahoo has Anaheim. Very interesting. Anaheim is a bit of a Cinderella story, and it might end there as they're up 2 nothing. ESPN 1-1 one one against the Maple Leafs. Maple Leafs is definitely a better team than Anaheim. 
They lose the next two games there, and Yahoo sweeps the Ducks. Okay, so uh, we have to again come back in 3-1 with this ESPN team. I was going to say, we have their goalie in Anderson, and then we have just like a way better team in terms of offense and defense. Can we do it again? Oh, we, we might do it again. Are you kidding me? Wow, <laughs> that's insane. Down 3-1 to one, back to back series and somehow they find a way. That's impressive. They got Montreal Canadiens here in the Eastern Conference Final. Yahoo's got Vegas Golden Knights. Uh, so it's in the first two games again. And they lose both to Vegas. Interesting. Well, ESPN wins both to Montreal. Wouldn't that be something? ESPN, they then lose the next two to Montreal. Yahoo's barely alive. So they're 1-3. and three. ESPN's 2-2. Two and two. Alright, so let's see. We're just going to do it like a game at a time here. Yahoo wins. ESPN wins. Can they both stay alive? ESPN wins. They're on the Stanley Cup Final. And I see Yahoo won as well. Because uh, 3-3. Three, three. Wow. Down 3-0 to the Vegas Golden Knights. I didn't actually realize they were down 3-0. I thought it was 3-1. They've won three in a row now. They have a chance to reverse sweep. To make this Stanley Cup Final. To play ESPN. Who I didn't think was going to make it after those first couple rounds. Come on, Yahoo. They do, they do it. I was talking about Golden State up 3-1. Yahoo. Reverse sweep against the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, did the San Jose Sharks do the same thing? Or was it just the big comeback in that one game? But there we go. That's the matchup we wanted to see. It happened. Um, ESPN's 12 and 8 through their playoffs. Yahoo there's 12 and 5. It's pretty crazy how dominant Yahoo was, and they almost got swept in the conference final, but they didn't, and now they're on the Stanley Cup final, so fair enough. Uh, they do have the home ice advantage here, so I guess I'll sim Yahoo's home games from their perspective. Uh, I feel like we could probably do these ones period by period as well, just to kind of see how these two uh, fancy teams perform against each other. Wow, ESPN, first game away. Huge advantage at Forsberg. And, wow, Forsberg gets a Hattie, Tarasenko, Larkin. Uh, so it looks like these guys might have caught fire at the right time. They came back from 3-1 twice in the first two rounds. But Yahoo, like, with the reverse sweep in the conference final, you'd think they'd be the hotter team right now. I don't know. 2-1, uh, March Sokas, Netsov, Tarasenko, Hall, and 5-2 win, Tarasenko for both teams, and Kuznetsov. All right, so... 1-1 uh, one, one tie game. Again, like I said, almost half the teams honestly the same, like 8 of 20 players um, are the same for both teams. Now, I meant to sim this from ESPN's perspective, my bad. 1-0 uh, for ESPN, 1-0 Landeskog there. Stanner, Perron, Ranston, Larkin for Yahoo. Not going to be enough though. ESPN wins that one, 4-1. This is looking like it'll be a series for sure. 2-1 lead here for ESPN. Uh, next game is Yahoo's and it's 2-0. Nugent Pacioretty. 3-1 Hall, and then Forsberg for them. 4-1, so there we go. Uh, series is tied, two apiece. So game number five here, series is tied. 2-1 lead for Yahoo. March is so for each team. That's ready, though. Uh, Mar wow, March is so again. Sort of has a hat trick. He got three goals in the game. Just uh, two was for the Yahoo team, one for the ESPN team. So 3-2 series lead. Potential Stanley Cup winning game here for Yahoo. Uh, we'll go to ESPN's perspective. Can they hold on? Can they fight off? the Yahoo team. Not looking good. Kuznetsov, Nuge, Carlson, Weber though for ESPN. They need a big third period here. Speed it up here. Power play. Doesn't look good. Forsberg makes this a game. 15 minutes to go. ESPN only down by one. Can they do something? Power play. And they kill it off. They got pretty good like PK uh, on that team. Um, Weber, Suter, shine it down. Three minutes left. One minute. And no, Yahoo Fantasy Team is the Stanley Cup champion, beating out the ESPN Fantasy Team in six games. That's pretty cool. Like I said, um, that is the final I wanted. I wanted the two fantasy teams to meet each other. I'll take a look here at the playoff scoring leaders for both teams. Uh, you can see Tarasenko, 27 and 26 for ESPN, over a point per game. Stan was a point per game. Rantanen basically was. Larkin almost was as well. So those four guys uh, really carried this ESPN team. Take a look at how Anderson did. 0.907 and 2.72, 14-11 and 1 with a shutout. Not too bad. Now Kuznetsov was a scoring leader for the Yahoo team with a point per game. Uh, Nuge 21 is pretty close. Larkin again playing big for both teams. Pacioretty as well 19, March so 18. Uh, Tarasenko not quite as good on this team, only 18. But I think in the regular season he was actually better for the Yahoo team. But in the playoffs he was better for the ESPN team. Weird how that looks out. Carlson also at 18 as a defenseman, that's impressive. Hall 17, you expect a bit better from him. He did have a lot of shots there. 
Uh, game winners, no one really sticking out to me. Let's see Vasilevsky stats here. 15, 5, and 2. The .922 and a 2.22. It's probably your Conn Smythe Trophy winner. Those are some nice stats there from the goalie. Um, aside from the Vegas series, I'd say he played, you know, pretty good there in the playoffs. The awards here, I'm hoping, you know, both teams get a few player awards. Stanley Cup, of course, Yahoo. They also got the President's Trophy, Francis Campbell. ESPN, though, did get Prince of Wales. McDavid got the Art Ross. Okay, I forgot to check scoring leaders for uh, the entire league, but we know now. Hart Trophy also went to McDavid. Morgan Riley got the James Norris. McDavid gets the Lady Bing. Kaprizov got the Calder. That's who my uh, prediction was actually to win the Calder real life. Nugent Hopkins, Conn Smythe. We'll have to check his stats. I thought Vasilevsky for sure. Um, Anderson on ESPN got the Vezina. Wow. Because Vasilevsky had 74 games played for the Yahoo team. That's why though, I didn't realize the ESPN team had the lowest goals against. Anderson there you can see also gets William Jennings, so that makes sense. Johnsville Masterton, O'Reilly gets the Selkie. McDavid also got Ted Lindsay and the Marisha Shard. Wow, okay, so we gotta take a quick look, I think, um, just how good McDavid did here, because that's pretty nuts. 102 points, 82 games, uh, that's pretty crazy. Season mode, you can't turn up the Sim Engine scoring, so it's just normal, essentially. And he also had 47 goals, which was the highest, kind of surprisingly. Tarasenko there, one shy. Was he the second best? He was, so one shy Marisha Shard, that'd be kind of cool, but... Uh, McDavid definitely deserved it there. Also, I'm checking the goalie stats. Even though Vasilevsky had the 74 games played, he had 2.57 goals against with a .908 save percentage, where Anderson had a .919 with a 2.3. As you mentioned, lowest goals against. You can see uh, he's the lowest there of any starting goalie, so well-deserved. And Nuge here winning the Consumite, like I said, it's a little surprising because Kuznetsov had a couple more points. I thought Vasilevsky had really good playoff numbers, but uh, maybe it's because he had a couple more goals than Kuznetsov. It was a plus 14. Um, couple game winners. I don't know, it's still a little bit weird to me. I know my last video with the Canterbury Junior and Dylan Holloway won it, which again, I thought was interesting. So, I'm not sure how they're choosing the Con Smythe now, but the fact it's not so obvious is also kind of cool, I guess. But that's gonna be it, guys, for this video. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. If you did, leave that thumbs up. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. Like, half of you watching haven't hit the sub button, so please do that before you click off this video. And as always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.